In this video, we're talking about how you can track any object in Final Cut, and this automated process makes it easy to add graphics and text anywhere within your videos. So when Final Cut was first released, people were always talking about how it's not a professional editing software, but it has come so far from where it originally started to where it is now. With Final Cut, you have the ability to add in plugins, and Pixel Film Studios is one of the companies that is making these plugins for Final Cut to basically simplify the process and give you tools that will enhance your editing. And this is one of the really cool things about Final Cut in general is that it speeds up your editing workflow. So when you add in these plugins, you get a whole new set of controls and you get very specific things like auto tracking. So this is one tool that I use all the time and specifically because I want to be able to add graphics and text within my videos. Whether I'm doing like my tutorials and I'm just adding some graphics that show exactly what I'm talking about or I'm doing one of my films and I just want to layer in like text to make the video more engaging, tracking was not necessarily something that was easy before this plugin came out. The old way of tracking was basically going keyframe by keyframe and moving the text or the object in your video and basically doing it manually. It takes a ton of time to keyframe things frame by frame. So with the auto tracker, it's an automated process. You can load it into your timeline and it tracks objects within the frame so that you don't have to do it manually. It really renders fast and makes the whole editing workflow easy. So guys, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do a lot of filmmaking tutorials product reviews, and I also do a lot of YouTube training. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss one of these tutorials. Now, one thing I wanna mention is that the first 500 people who use my code will get 30% off AutoTracker 2.0. All right, let's dive into the software and let me show you how powerful this is. So once you have the plugin installed in Final Cut, you go into your generator tab and you can use a drop zone text or drop zone in text. And you just drag this right on top of your footage. Now what you're gonna do is go to the front of your clip, pull up the track editor, which is gonna be in your effects window. And then a new window is gonna pop up and this is your tracking. So you could use a square or a circle to track. You're gonna readjust the frame, find a point that you wanna track, and then you're going to use the square or the circle and create your box around that object. Now you're gonna click the play button and what it's doing is tracking that specific point, that part in the frame that you have selected and it's creating all the keyframes for you. This is super powerful. You just have to sit here and let it render and it goes frame by frame and as you can see, it moves very fast. Now one thing I wanna note is that you have this track quality so you can bump this up to 100%. It's gonna take a little bit more time to render but your results are gonna be a little bit better especially if you want that tracking to be perfect. So once it finishes tracking your object, you just hit export data. Now in your effects window, you can see that it's got a bunch of different tools that you can use. You wanna make sure that you turn your drop zone and your text on and off. You can basically put anything in that drop zone editor. So whether you have like another motion plugin or you just have some element that you've created with a transparent background, you can use any of that as you're tracking. Basically the software gives you all the tracking data points and then you add anything you want in that drop zone. So I'm gonna pull an arrow into my timeline. I'm gonna to go to the tracker, go down to my drop zone, select the drop zone, click the clip and apply it. I'm gonna scale it within the drop zone so you see everything. And then I'm gonna rotate it so that it points exactly at what I wanna point at. Now you can grab on the screen itself and move this object around, which is great. So you can find where you wanna place it, change the rotation, you can change your anchor point, your position, basically all the tools that you'd want to readjust your graphics are built in here. Now when you play it back, you can see that it's automatically tracking that object. Now one of the really powerful things about this tracking software is that it not only tracks your position, but it also tracks your rotational data, and it also tracks the size. So beyond just tracking your position on the screen, you can track whether something rotates and follow it and whether something gets smaller or bigger. Super powerful, depending on what you're creating, you might want to add those on. Now, if you just wanna have your graphic or your text just move around the screen following the object that you're tracking, then you would just turn it off here. Turn off the scale and turn off the rotational data. Now you're just tracking the position and the graphic just moves with the object. Now I wanna show you how you can add motion graphics using this auto tracker. So I have another plugin from Pixel Film Studios called ProText Slide and Flip. And this creates cool graphic elements and you don't really have to keyframe anything. It's the same type of thing. It's all automated. So you have these moving text elements 
and everything is super easy to use. This is what I use to create all my tutorials when I have graphics on the bottom, on the sides. I always use this Pixel Film Studios plugin. I'm gonna drop my text element onto the shot. Then what I'm gonna do is make this a compound clip and I'm gonna go back into my Tracker 2.0, go to that Drop Zone Editor and apply that compound clip as my graphic element. Now, as you can see, when I pop it on there, you have that motion graphic happening as well as the tracking. So you just created some motion with the tracking elements. One other tool that this plugin has is a motion blur element. If you go into your inspector and you go down to your drop zone controls, you can see right at the bottom, you have this motion blur and it's a slider. It goes from zero to three. And what that does is basically changes the amount of motion blur on the object. So if you're shooting with motion blur in the frame, you wanna match that with your graphic elements so that it seems seamless. Now what's also cool is you can use this tracker to track a background object and put something on a wall. Just one thing you have to keep in mind is that this tracker does not do perspective. So the wall needs to stay flat to camera. You can't be shifting the perspective, otherwise the track will not work properly. So I have a couple tips for you to really make this plugin work when you're creating your content. The first is you wanna shoot at a high shutter speed. If there's too much motion blur, then the tracker's not going to grab onto it. The bare minimum is double that of your frame rate. So typically that's what you're gonna be shooting at. If you're shooting 30 frames a second, you'll have a 160 shutter. If you're shooting 24, you'll have a 48, but you don't really wanna go under that. Otherwise the tracker will have a little bit of issues. It deals with contrast, that's how it tracks objects. So you have to track an object where there is contrast and the automation can actually see the difference between objects and it will track those differences. So when you're shooting, just make sure you have contrast where you want to track an object. Patterns also work very well, so look for patterns that you can use as objects to track. Now a couple pro tips. One is bump up the contrast of your clip before you apply the tracker. Now you can go through and take this contrast off later, but what that does is basically create those contrast lines so the tracker really has something to grab onto. The other tip is to shoot in slow motion. So 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second, something slower than normal, especially when it comes to shots that are hard to track. So you shoot in slow motion and track in slow motion. So for example, if you want your shot to be in 30p, you can still shoot it in 120 frames per second so that you're able to track the object that you wanna track and then speed it up later by four times and now you get a 30 frames per second with that precision tracking. Those are just a couple things that will make it easier to track objects so you can really isolate on that specific thing that you're going after. So guys, like I said, the first 500 people that use my link down in the description get 30% off. I highly suggest going and checking that out. And guys, if you like this and wanna see more editing tutorials like this, please let me know down in the comments. I wanna know if this is kind of a topic that I should go down on my channel and do more videos around plugins and Final Cut and just the whole editing workflow, how to make things faster and really how to speed it up so you can be more creative and create the content that you wanna create and not get bogged down by all the editing and all of that. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you on the next one.